So I'm calling the Amherst School Committee um, meeting uh, starting at 7.07, calling it to order. Uh, first, I uh, want you to just go through um, parts of the agenda and then we'll move on uh, to approval of minutes. But, uh, you know, so this public comments, superintendent's update we'll deal with. Uh, new and continuing business under that is uh, FY13 budget guidelines, school choice, Amherst fees. These are Crocker Farm preschool and school lunch, regionalization study conversation, and then accept gifts. Um, there are no subcommittee appointments and then we'll have school planning. Um, any uh, additions, uh, anything else? Thank you, so we'll move on. Approval of minutes, November 22nd, and that was the joint meeting of I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I think we approved these at the regional meeting. You did. So I would make a motion to approve these with as amended at the regional committee. I forget what those amendments were. Was one about was I, I think the amendments were oh, on the October. October. Okay. Excuse okay. me. Uh, yes, October. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? So, um, any public comments? If you want to make public comments, come to the uh, table and identify yourself. And please li uh, limit your public comments to no more than three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why don't you come, to, you, got, you, you got to come to that front table there. Buenas tardes, good evening. Vladimir Morales. Uh, I have about three items, maybe I just finished on two. Um, item number one. Uh, I belong to a coalition, a statewide, uh, whereas uh, we are got together last year, last August, and we are looking, we are ready now to, uh, to start uh, putting some substance on the, uh, uh, what we're pursuing. And what we are pursuing is to attempt to uh, change the uh, University of Massachusetts uh, as, a, as our understanding as an outpatient clinic. Uh, there is a federal law that you advertise as an outpatient clinic, you will have to bring anybody, uh, Medicare, uh, in Massachusetts called MassHealth, people that are not has a private plan. Uh, the reason why I'm here tonight is to uh, advise you, uh, you're not gonna decide this tonight, but it'll be great to see, we're going around different towns, but uh, since I live in Amherst, uh, I, it will be great for you as a body <clears throat> to have a discussion. What we're asking you is to attach your name to this, uh, to this movement. We are consulting right now with the ACLU of Massachusetts, and they are, might, be, uh, might be able to set a class action suit and have the university explain why they do not accept uh, families and um, individuals with mass health or Medicare. So that's one of the items, so hopefully, uh, I know that you put stuff on the record when you put the comments, so that's something that you'll decide. You decide yes to what your name as a school committee body, fine. You don't decide to do it, fine too. But at least I think I bring it to your attention. I think it's a good cause. Not everybody has uh, private plans. Uh, the other item that I want to bring in front of the committee is the, the one that uh, I'm a little concerned as I've been hearing and I, saw, I do receive the minutes 
about, I understand that there's a 48% of students with free and reduced lunch. I, that's what I hear, and that's what I've seen printed. And it just, uh, uh, also I'm hearing a lot about the so-called achievement gap that is happening. So one of the questions that I have is I'm on those, that is there is a 48% of free and reduced lunch. How many of those students are, let's say, uh, uh, are, in the, are, are, are not achieving? Uh, I think it's a fair question. I think that is also something that uh, I guess I remember. I was around here when the, uh, we used to have this system called tracking and at the time the NAACP mm -hmm. uh, filed suit. Uh, there was uh, an agreement at the end of the suit that uh, the NAACP dropped the suit, but I do believe that we could bring it under the same uh, precedent, the issue again. So I'm leaving this here. Uh, if someone would like to uh, let us know or let me know, know how to reach me. And, um, and I think those are stuff that are uh, things that uh, uh, this committee should look into it. And I'm <clears throat> totally confident that you guys are. Uh, and then the other final public uh, that I have to make is the one that uh, uh, gee. Uh, I I have been hearing a lot and about the so-called robocalls. I've been in this town 30 years, and actually, I, uh, some of you know my record. And I get robocalls. Uh, what I'm missing is the Spanish or other language robocalls. Uh, I think that in a community of this, uh, of farmers, uh, not everyone a uh, has uh, computers, not everyone uh, understand, unfortunately, the English, although the kids do. And I would like to see you uh, as a body, as a committee, uh, address those things. It was always that was, has been missed. Uh, I believe uh, there was a time that we used to have becoming a multicultural school system, banned. Uh, it is my understanding that uh, uh, it has been changed now to social justice for every kid with the same uh, caviar of the BAMs. Uh, and as I understood BAMs, uh, what's going on now is not that. Uh, you cannot go against social justice. They come together if we are about social justice. So I just uh, uh, want to uh, <clears throat> bring that to your attention. Uh, I understand, again, that uh, when you bring something here in public comment, you'll let me know what it is. And finally, in 2002, there was a ballot question in Massachusetts called ballot question number two. It was the eradication of transitional bilingual education. Uh, I just found out through some friends in Boston that there is a provision on that law that uh, if you find or if you can um, gather 20 parents on any school in Massachusetts, since it was the first time they legislated language, uh, that you could actually, uh, through the law, uh, create a bilingual class. Uh, I don't have the, you know, I mean, you all have the resources and the question is this, is that stance, and is that it, so what it is, uh, and 20 parents petition your board to a bilingual class, uh, what would your position be since you all went, no, no, since I think not you all, but the district now, I believe that is into this English plus sort of a thing, uh, by past action, and I see the, the meetings, and I read the thing, and I wonder is, Let's say tomorrow I bring 20 parents to this district and we want a bilingual class. How will you react to that? 
And that's, and, and, and that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, usually we don't respond, but, uh, no, there, I know, but, I know. but there's uh, one piece of information that's public information that came out in the regional meeting on when the equity, equity report was done by Martha Guevara. Uh, that I think that some all of those inform, the information related to the uh, the demographics and the makeup of the schools it's all available and it's it actually should be online is, is that I've, that I'm report sorry, I'm not sure if it's been posted yet one from last week one from last I'm week I'm not sure if it's up yet or not but it will be but it has a plethora well I I, I have not been following this the, yeah. right. for since I left in you know, five. What I do uh, would like to see uh, on those items that I mentioned here tonight to be, uh, let me know so like that we know what, right. how to proceed. Thank you. Thank, to thank you very much. All right, superintendent's update. Okay, let's see. I think you have it in front of you. It's very brief tonight. Um, I just wanted to mention um, the Emory Education Foundation um, has a diff, uh, gift donation fundraiser happening right now which um, they offer the opportunity for community members and to make a donation in the honor of a teacher. Um, they've had some very positive um, feedback from this fund uh, raising in the past, and the funds that come in um, do affect and, and support students in Amherst, Pelham, Leverett, and Shutesbury. So this um, tax deductible donation can be made um, at the Amherst Education Foundation website. So I do want to mention that because they do a remarkable job for our schools. Um, also tomorrow night, um, there is a Generations Together, a Cambodian open house um, at Crocker Farm. It's for all preschool through grade 12 Cambodian families who are coming together in a multi-generational event, which will be student performances, as well as opportunities for parents and staff to talk about um, their children's educational experience in our schools. So we are hoping school committee members will come and join us at Crocker Farms from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And I believe it's a potluck as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, just to add to it, the, mm -hmm. the PGOs have, um, all, from all the schools, have provided money. Mm -hmm. And so many of the families um, were provided ingredients and are cooking. Mm -hmm. And there was a somewhat of a similar, but probably not as comprehensive celebration last year, and it was an amazing event to go to. So we hope that you'll come and, and meet our families and be part of that celebration. Um, also, I, there's an, um, lots of going on this month in our schools and the elementary schools. So I just have created a blurb that talks about activities at Crocker Farm, like a geography bee that's happening in grades four through six. So that is here. Also, Fort River PGO sponsored a successful scholastic book fair, which I guess um, Jane Yolen, who's a popular children's um, author, was on hand. So, and all of the funding for these events was to support the Fort River Library. So we do want to acknowledge um, the work that the PGO at Fort River, um, they went above and beyond. So. But that is listed here for you, and um, that's it for the updates for tonight. Any questions? One other update um, I want to add. Um, on the 19th, which is Monday, um, the uh, Crocker Farm, at Crocker Farm, um, there is a um, sort of a certificate being given to students who participated and the Junior Achievement Entrepreneurship Program. These are fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Um, this uh, course uh, was co-taught by myself and um, Donna Kelly. Mm -hmm. It was an extraordinary uh, accomplishment. If you want to stop by, it's from four. Uh, it starts at three and will go until four. And the Junior Achievement people will be there, plus parents will be there, and I, I know I will be there. It was an incredible experience, and one of the things that I learned from it is that I uh, revisited my teaching career, and there's nothing like no, turning around and seeing, you know, 10, 11 kids riveted on you. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Huge pressure. Riveted. <laughs> riveted attention. Anyway. I know. I think you had a wonderful time. I, I did have a great time. Probably as equally as the kids. Great. Great. All right. Um, FY13 budget guidelines. Now it should be on your in the table on the table in front of you. Uh, 
and this is uh, similar to what I sent out on the, on the uh, email, except that I had a gremlin in my word processor that wouldn't let me do anything. So, but this is very much the same. And what we want to do tonight, um, go through this, and we would like to, I'd like for us to discuss this, and then uh, we need to vote on it and send it on its way to the administration. Can I ask a questioner? Yes. Can you remind me um, how we got to this draft, where this draft came from? All right. Um, there are two, I think I, I thought I explained this. Um, we had everyone, I had written everyone to email me what your budget priorities were. All right. So I took all of the responses that I received and I put it into this format. And I explained I only did tier one and tier two. I didn't do anything else other than that. People want to add another tier or break this down into other tiers, that's fine. This is a starting point as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Can I surprise you? It, won't, it will not <laughs> surprise me. I don't want more tiers. What? I don't want more tiers. Excellent. I like everything on here, but I like them all equally. I, I, I don't even see how I can differentiate between tier one and tier two on this one. I almost feel like we have one tier here. Because if I had to, I could parse some of tier one down and some of tier two up. Right. Right. But I almost feel like there's one tier here and we need to work on all of these things. And I, I don't see anything here that we, we can honestly say that we won't work on. Correct. And, so. and, and the um, tier two, as it indicates, these were, this is where trade-offs may be re required in order to fund. In other words, if we really want these, we, we're going to have to look at the budget very carefully and make some trade-offs in order to have these things become a part of what we uh, want the budget look like. Whereas tier one, those are things we definitely want to have happen. Okay. Catherine. Yeah, I, I hear you about that, but I, I also agree with Rob, I mean, you know, this is so in line with what our district improvement plan is, and um, it would be very hard to, I mean, the, it's, it's going to be a difficult budget season. Um, I understand that, and I hope that we work very hard and very carefully to try to sort of push our district improvement plan through our budget. Uh, guidelines forward in the way that we would like. So I would have a very hard time parsing some of this stuff too. You know, I mean, maybe a little tweak here or tweak there, but. Right. Um, Can I suggest? Yeah. I mean, um, from my perspective, to work with the administrators around the budget, if people are comfortable with one, I mean, I think this does clearly lay out your priorities, and and I feel like we could work within this even if it wasn't in tiers. So if it's the tiers that's kind of steps in the way, we could, I think the spirit is very clear yeah. from the committee and your priorities. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. And if I absolutely had to have tiers, I would, I would say that the, the item on tier two that starts with maintain instrumental music, classroom music, art, PE, and library programs, I would kind of insist on being in tier one. Mm -hmm. But I'm okay with the superintendent's suggestion that we proceed with this as if they're homogeneous mm -hmm. single tier. All right, um, and I would agree with that, but I just what I, that's what, what the caveat is that I, I know going forward and uh, that we are going to have to look at this very carefully mm -hmm. in terms of the upcoming budgets, and we are going to have to make some choices. Uh, I believe these two gives, uh, these two tiers give us a way of looking at how to go about making those choices. All right. So, can we have a motion on this? I'll move to approve uh, the Amherst School Committee budget guidelines for fiscal year 2013 as presented here tonight. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. School choice. Yes. So in terms, of, thank you. Um, in terms of school choice, we need to have it, we typically have a discussion one meeting 
and then we go back for a vote the following meeting. We have a timeline, I believe, of, um, is it April, that we have to have a decision made as to whether we That's are going to be latest. a school choice district or not. Historically, Amherst has not accepted school choice students. Um, I'd like us to think about the possibility of um, accepting select numbers of students, small numbers of students. What I'd like to suggest is that if we accept so that we are a school choice district, um, when it comes down to the point of when we have our class sizes um, somewhat stable for next year and we have, say, two smaller classes where we want to we can't really make them one class, but we can break them into two, and we would be able to accept some students. Um, my opinion is that I think the revenue would be helpful to us. I know there's been a philosophical discussion of do we take funds from our neighbors, um, our neighboring towns, and I, I do feel that on a, on a certain level. However, I do feel that the state has set up you know, charter schools and choice and in our situation in Amherst, if kids are moving out, we're losing funds, but we have no, we do not have the capacity to fill that back in. So I'd like the committee to think about and maybe have some discussion around um, the possibility of us um, taking in some targeted school choice students for next year. Um, if I look at projections, early projections, and you look at the class configurations, which is extremely early, um, there's a potential of up to 40 students that could be filled into select spots. That's just with a very cursory look. But again, that number of students that we fill in would be a discussion that you would all have here um, with the class numbers. I just have a question. So you're suggesting that, for example, um, like if there's a, a kindergarten or first grade class of 23 or four you know, 23, 24, and you took some additional school choice kids, then you could potentially make, I mean, we could keep our numbers down in one way, in that way, by breaking into two smaller classes. I would say that it, it's kind of the, the opposite. So say we have um, 25, 26 kindergarten students. That's too many for a kindergarten class. Correct. So we're going to be forced in that circumstance to either split into two classrooms or relocate students to another school we would then have the opportunity to accept kindergarten students to a healthy level and it would be, so we'd have the classes in most cases anyway. So it would not be to incur additional expense, but it would be to, does that, am yes. I saying that clearly yeah. enough? Yes, yeah. So, and there are those circumstances because we are not moving kids across schools in the upper grades, we may have a class in an upper grade that's very low that we feel like we could bulk up a little bit. Um, Again, the point of what is too many would be a discussion that would come here. Okay. But I, I think to have that opportunity when our enrollment has been going down over time to maintain the things that we value in our school district, we know we, where we've been for the past six years in terms of cutting. So I think it is um, another revenue source. Anyone else? Rob? Yeah, I'm in agreement with this and I'm in favor of this too. I, I think we're in a, um, a system that's been set up where the town, many towns around us use school choice and for us to have that flexibility I think is important to Amherst. Um, so if we can work within the margin as Maria suggests to not have to add an additional teacher but to fill in spots where we already have a classroom, I, I think it's reasonable. I know there's been some philosophical opposition to it in the past but I feel like if towns around us are doing it and there's pressure with kids going to charter school and other choice that it, it's something we need to consider. You know, I, w I would like to see this go forward in terms of a further discussion. Mm -hmm. um, have the enrollment figures come in and projected enrollment figures come in so that we can know what, is, uh, what, what that's going to look like sure. going forward. One of the worries that I have without, one of the worries that I have is once we uh, accept those students they're here mm -hmm. uh, and they will go through the system right. so we, we have to not only think in terms of current terms in terms of the students that we have but also right. future as they go through the system and and i i totally agree with that and students are scrambling 
and families to have students come in in seventh grade to our schools. We have multiple requests each year for the elementary school, and we are able to accept students at the secondary level to round out, again, to round out classes and to maintain what we believe is an Amherst education. You know, what are the things that we want to hold? So I know that it's, it's a tough conversation, but I'd be happy to come back next month to our next meeting with some more information for us to, to look at and to consider. I think yeah, is Catherine. Yeah, no, I just I, and, and, um, I agree with Rob. And one of the things I like about it in particular is, um, you know, we have talked about needing to think of other ways to raise revenue, and this would certainly be something that that um, is a, is a really viable. And I mean, I understand what you're saying, Irv, but I, you know, these are the kinds of things we need to start thinking about. And other towns are doing it in charter schools and uh, so I think it makes sense so if it's comfortable for the committee we'll put it on our next meeting right. to come I, back up in front I, of you again I, I just you know I would like to have a really full discussion and mm -hmm. let's just have the discussion and then the vote once we have all the information before us um, and again all what we're talking about is uh, taking care of marginal costs in relationship to filling in students we right. if we can if we can do it and, uh, inside of marginal cost, right. cost exactly. then it works for everyone. And, but that needs to be determined by the numbers that are brought to us. We are not a, a community that is looking to balance our budget using right. school choice, so we're not hitting a tipping point. But if, if we vote to become a school choice community, we may choose just to, to accept five children. So it depends how deeply we go into accepting students is based on what's in front of us at that moment. So I would be happy to bring this back. Any further discussion? All right, thank you. All right, um, these are Amherst fees, uh, Crocker Farm Preschool and School Lunch. This is on the uh, region, and we went through it anyway. Uh, so this is a rehash of that. Right. Um, and what I would like to, for us to do is to uh, vote on this, unless people really want uh, a, to continue the discussion of it. Now. Uh, Joanne is here if there are questions specific to preschool, just so that I know that that was an area that we didn't address fully last time. Information? Yes. I move that we accept the uh, fees for preschool located at Crocker Farm going from 450 to 5 and school meal prices for lunch and breakfast going from 250 to 275 and breakfast 50 cents to 75 cents. Second. And then just one thing I'd want to say is that I think it was mentioned at the regional meeting that we're still pretty low compared to other, you know, other preschools. Yes. But it was also mentioned that, you know, it's tough on people who go up too much in one year. So we're going up 10% this year. Um, yeah. And what I would say is let's go up 10% a year until we catch up to the other places. So. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Next is regionalization study. And this was put on there because uh, we um, it was felt that it was necessary for us just to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, even though uh, it passed in town meeting and all the other town meetings have now brought into the school planning committee, has been formed. Our representative is uh, Catherine, Catherine Oppie. So this is an opportunity for us to discuss this among ourselves. But, you know, it, even in fact, in knowing that um, this is now largely out of the hands of the school committee. I, I thought too it might be helpful for Catherine to talk a little bit about where you all are and, and then also if there are specific questions that the committee wants Catherine to bring that are right up front stated here are some things we really want you to explore. I mean clearly there's some straightforward questions we all hold but if committee members have you know um, specific questions so I don't yeah it would be interesting um, to know where you are so w where we are now is that the other two members Andy Steinberg and Alyssa Brewer um, have been appointed and accepted and um, we are having our first meeting of the Amherst committee um, Thursday morning at nine o'clock in town hall um, I think on the first floor meeting room so it's an open public meeting it's been posted I believe the agenda has been posted um, and I think I'll know a lot more after that meeting, you know, we'll elect officers and 
um, talk about how we're going to proceed. I know that the other towns have also formed their committees, um, but we have no uh, date to meet with them. We're going to meet as an Amherst committee first. Anything else? So, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I think Maria's suggestion is a good one, that if there are co specific questions f from the school committee that I can take to the meeting on Thursday, um, that I will do that. I should do that. Rob? Yeah, there was an um, <clears throat> issue of possible public forums raised at this committee, and I believe it was raised at town meeting also, and I guess I got them to get a sense of what our planning was or w what we were foreseeing going forward with mm -hmm. that. Well, um, the, so the committee has been charged with having six public, uh, six public meetings, two of which are public forums. So I'm imagining that on Thursday we will determine the schedule of that and determine the public, Amherst public forums. But yes, we have every intention of having them. I just don't know when they are. Anything else on this? We can move on then. I uh, want to accept gifts. Somewhere. Yeah, where are the gifts? Yeah, where are they? I got it. Do you have gifts? Um, they're on the very back. I've got it. Or if if oh, you, you got it? the. Uh, Rob has it. I move to accept a gift from the Fort River. That. It's my kid's school. <laughs> Fort River Parent Council to help defray costs to staff lounge, staff lounge renovations for a total of $1,500. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Done. All right, there are no policies, all policies. Just so you know, as a reminder, our policies all come through the region. Um, and all of those were accepted last week. Um, subcommittee reports? Uh, Rick. Just to hand out uh, summary notes from the BCG meetings of October 20th and November 30th. I'm trying to do a better job of sharing the information back to the committees. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. And well, I think those are both yours. I have. Yeah. There's actually, I'm kind of surprised there's actually nothing on these about, you know, the numbers, but basically, I think it was at the October 20th meeting that the number of 2.8% is being, you know, suggested as what we can increase our budgets by. And where that comes from is roughly a 3.5% increase in property taxes that we generally get with a proposition 2.5, increase of 2.5, and, and roughly 1% in new growth. But then state aid is, I think, projected to go up by maybe 1%. So. I'm getting two. I think that's two now. Okay. It on. I believe I could mm -hmm. be wrong on that one. So the mix of the two. Uh, you know, results in 2.8%, so that's where that comes from. That's how much we think revenue is going to go up, so that's how much the budgets go up if you're not taking out of reserves or something like that. So that's the mark for all of the town departments to stay within a 2.8%, and that was the preliminary guidance from the Finance Committee. Uh, I think that, you know, we, are, we need to be aware of the fact that 28 is not something that we can live with. Um, that we are going to be looking at uh, the budget and taking back to BCG something other than 2.8. Uh, that discussion will be held, uh, held here as we go through the process and Rob and Maria bring forth more, num more numbers. But uh, preliminar preliminarily, we um, are um, expecting that we will be beyond the 2.8. So we'll bring, um, I, I'm not sure if it's at the end of January in our terms of our budget timeline, some preliminary information to the committee about what a, a projection of 2.8 means for a gap for the school district because as I stated at BCG, the assumption that a 2.8 percent um, increase holds people or maintains departments in whole is not accurate for the schools when we are 80 percent staff just going up in terms of staff, I think it's um, well over a 2.8% um, increase, never mind health insurance and other 
um, costs that we need to account for. So we'll be bringing that to you so that we can see what the level of, of gap is at this moment. Um, and it, we're very preliminary, of course, looking at our projections, and, um, but we'll bring that to you very soon. And there is a gap, so mm -hmm. and, and, um, right. when um, I think the next time Amherst meets, we should have that. Yep. Yep. But there is a gap. Any other discussion, questions? Good. No, I'll just say the Joint Capital Planning Committee tends to be quiescent at this period, but we'll mm -hmm. ramp up again in January. If anyone have any issues to bring for capital for the elementary system. Thank you. Um, can I mention one other thing, which is kind of around the capital? Um, I think it was Steve who raised the issue before around the facilities issues, you know, Wildwood, Fort River, what about renovations? And we did, and I'm not going to get the, the language correct on this, but we, we went through the process for the middle school windows. You know, you go in and you apply for funding. So we are initiating that request for Fort River and Wildwood. We don't have, you know, a strong feeling that we will receive the funding, but we're going to go through the process to hope to be able to look at some renovation if we rank high enough in the state's um, priority list. So I just want to let that, you know, be out there as well. Anything else? Um, upcoming, upcoming calendar. Unfortunately, I left my calendar. Yeah, you know, Do you I have didn't. a next? I didn't bring my well, calendar. That's all right. I, I, How'd you have one there, Rick? We know. also, if I can mention, Irv, are you okay with me? I met with Superintendent's Planning Council today, too, and we've kind of looked out past where we were scheduled um, to look at additional reports that we'd like to bring in front of the school committee. So I'm revising the schedule right now to share with Rick and Irv. I'm meeting with the chairs um, tomorrow afternoon. So we'll have some updated. I want to have a facilities report. I'd like to have a technology report come in front of the committee. So we are adding additional body to that document for um, past January, February, March, April, because we're a little packed in there with the budget process. So, so. definitely the next time mm -hmm. FY13 bud budget and yes. tiered instructional model. Yes. Um, is there? And we will also come back with school choice um, yes. again at that time. So. So Rick. Uh, not necessarily for an agenda item or whatever, but one thing I'd really like us to do, if possible, in the district is to do more data analysis following up on what we were talking yep. about today. Absolutely. Where on two things, MCAS scores and discipline data, if we can do some kind of really good statistical analysis of our data versus state data and national data for mm -hmm. discipline, if it exists, but at least state data on the MCAS, because I don't have a good sense about where we are versus the state on these things. And also, uh, historically, like, where are we going? Are we going up, going down? I mean, like on MCAS, I heard the other day that we, we have schools out of, you know, not making AYP, but I heard that 80% of Massachusetts schools aren't making AYP. Right. But that, that doesn't really tell me anything because mm -hmm. I don't know if that's good to be right. in the 80% or not. And so, I wish we could really, and the numbers are complicated with MCAS, but they if are. we could find out the numbers that matter in the different subgroups and compare sure. ourselves, that would be great. And you know, if that requires outside horsepower, I right. would just get it. And it's I, only a once a year thing. Right, I, I agree. Um, if I can comment quickly that we did talk a little bit about um, kind of the analysis of data and like trend data over time in comparison to our scores and our discipline um, numbers compared to the state and some other um, communities. And I think that may be a place where we, we ask someone to come in and do an analysis for us, um, given we have one person who kind of does the data work for the districts. Um, but I do, I absolutely, um, I appreciate Rick's suggestion that we, we spoke about today, and we'll look at that um, coming down and see when does it make sense to really have this data presentation. I also will talk to the chairs tomorrow just about the format of when we're bringing information forward to the committee. Um, I want to become a probably clearer on when are we giving a comprehensive report, and when is it more of um, a memo to the superintendent with presentation points, like when we're sharing out versus when do we want the committee to have some discussion and decision making? Because I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is um, manage the workload of staff and say when is it really important to have the comprehensive report, and when is just too much information, too much information. So we're going to try to, I, you know, I'll be asking for lots of feedback around what is helpful. Um, 
over the next few weeks so that we can get this down. All right. So um, in terms of uh, future agenda items, school chip choice, mm -hmm. uh, the tiered instructional mod uh, model, uh, <coughs> and budget, it's always going to be yep. here. It's starting heavily. Uh, and uh, I also would like to have Rhonda come before us. Yep. It would be good for her to talk about her work. Yeah, I'd be happy to have her come. And et cetera. That's great. Um, and the other thing is in the, uh, the, the equity report that re uh, was presented last week uh, was an extraordinary document, and I went through it uh, extensively. Mm -hmm. And there are items in there that we need to bring forward mm -hmm. just for um, Amherst. Okay. Some of it re refers exactly to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the questions that I raised about, uh, I raised about looking at subgroups uh, within the subgroups and looking at them just as a standalone mm -hmm. group and what those numbers look like okay. uh, as, as opposed to comparing them with mm -hmm. other groups, you know. Uh, and it's something that we need to, we need to see. And, and I did uh, write uh, Maria and, and Mar Marta mm -hmm. uh, in terms of listing out what I saw as the points that we needed to look at carefully and was I asked the, uh, them to prioritize mm -hmm. because if you look at that report and I want to bring, I won't go through it now, I would like for us to go through that report uh, as it uh, pertains to Amherst. Uh, that data, I would suggest that all of us go through that report again because there's some extraordinary data in there uh, and also the recommendations and summary sessions section mm -hmm. is uh, rather illuminating. I also um, will be asking Marta to put the recommendations in a multi-year plan so that way people can know what will be addressed this year, what will be next year, what's the following year. Because clearly we, we will tackle things um, and strategically how we, what we can manage year one, two, three. Right, and, and that's a good idea. I'm yeah, because you know, we, we need to look at it. It's very you know, transparent. It's just, it is just good mm -hmm. to look at it because it is, uh, it's an incredible document, mm -hmm. and I really appreciated the work that was put into it. Yes. And by prioritizing it, uh, we can then look at what's going to happen this year, next year, yep. such a consider a huge laundry list of things that need to be accomplished. Absolutely. Anything else to be added? Hey, I can't believe it. I know, it's a beautiful thing. Or I'm going to take a motion for adjournment. So move. Second. Thank you. We're adjourned. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. I know. Thank you all.